Solitude will start to feel like a punishment if you haven't cultivated that, if you haven't cultivated safety in solitude. She is dark as a sea and it light and beautiful and bright as the sun. The salt of the earth, fire burning and water dripping. How could be using goddess of magic? She is timeless. The pillow that doesn't need a plug. She is the wildest woman. And let me say it again for those who need to hear it. The black woman. Is God. Let me say it again. The black woman is God. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey yo, hey yo. Listen up. Listen up. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, and welcome to my spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees, you know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel and if you're feeling a vibe go ahead on and subscribe but before you click share this link welcome Wi-Fi to the secret window secret garden episode of the wireless woman and yes this is also the title of a very disturbing Stephen King short story but I promise this episode has nothing to do with that. But you already know what time it is. It is time to call the roll. And I need all of my wilted and jilted, jaded and faded flowers of the garden to the front of the class. It is time to read aloud. Well, welcome back to all my old school Wi-Fi's, my dial-ups, and welcome in to my new school, my 5G's. Do me a favor while we're getting into today's content and like this video. If you like it, I love it. So today we're going to be talking about the secret window, secret garden, and one of the biggest components and proponents of my wireless journey was me being able to unplug. So during my year and the month off of social media, it was really just some of the most healing, calming, therapeutic times of my life. You know, we really take for granted how much time we have in a day because most of it is really consumed with time wasting activities. We have so many time saving devices like microwaves and washing machines and dishwashers, but somehow we still find ourselves stretched thin and pressed for time. I mean, like on a daily basis, it's like the struggle and grind of finding time for things that you really, really love and enjoy to do. So I am going to give you some tips for how I have been able to, as I call it, manifest time. You know, the Bible says redeeming the time for the days are evil. It really is a practice to be able to redeem time. It's like couponing, but for time. 
you know, time is a commodity just like anything else. The same way you can save money, you can save resources, you can can foods in order to preserve them. Time is the same type of scarce resource. You really have to keep it preserved in this pressurized capsule. And it's something you can pull out later on and refresh like memories, like photographs that you take. Time is mutable. It can be changed. It can be manipulated. Trust me, I know. Have you ever been like in an argument with someone and it seemed like it was going on and on and on forever and then you look down and it was like 10 minutes? Or have you ever been doing something that it just felt like you were only doing it for just a couple of minutes, but when you look down at your time, hours had passed? So time is a construct. It's a matter of perspective. And based on how you use your perspective of time, how you prioritize it, that will be the largest determining factor for what time is to you. None of us actually know how much of it we have. Therefore, it's completely impossible to be able to ration time. You know, we really have to learn how we can stretch it, preserve it, make the most out of it. And one of the biggest things that I've seen with my generation is the wormhole, the rabbit hole of technology. You know, it's made our lives better in so many ways that we don't see the bitter pill of what technology has also done. While it's given us time, it's also zapped the same time on the other end. As a prophet, I have been able to time travel. And if you read the Bible the way the authors intended it to be read, you'll actually see several instances in the Bible of people being able to travel through time. You know, there's the transfiguration on the mountain with Jesus where Moses and Elijah were there. And these people were dead and had been dead for many, many years. So how did they get there in their living form? And we already know that, yes, there is a resurrection, but it hasn't happened yet. So I believe those people were brought from different times in order to witness the ministry of Jesus. We also see that this could have been possible because Moses comes back down from the mountain with the tablets and he's been transfigured. That same glow, that, that glory that he had upon him that the Israelites could not look upon was the same transfiguring energy that James, John, and Peter saw on the mountain with Jesus. So, time travel. <laughs> We also know that Enoch walked with God and then he was not. He was translated. Elijah was taken up in a chariot of fire. He was translated. So, you know, um, John was on the island of Patmos when he was translated and taken to another time. Ezekiel was translated and taken to another time. So whether you believe in the Bible or not, I can honestly attest to the fact that time travel is a real thing. You know, we are able to manipulate time even just through our own manifestation and our own imagination. When you have learned how to harness the power of knowledge and energy, it's just like every other force. The same way energy isn't created or destroyed, it's just transferred. Time can also be transferred. It can also be translated. And I don't care how wild or far-fetched that may seem. It just is a reality. Like I got into it with one of my Facebook friends today because people have a hard time accepting anything as being a fact. Anything that conflicts with what they feel is their experiential knowledge of a certain topic is automatically discounted as being inaccurate. So this is my experiential knowledge of time, that it can be bent, it can be influenced, it can be manipulated. I've literally seen things happen in time that completely changed the plane that we were in, that literally took us from one 
alternate reality to another. You know, infinity is a real thing where time can turn over and lapse on itself. The greatest factor in your ability to control time is your own knowledge of self, your own connection to divine energy. So here are some things that I have done to be able to achieve that balance that's needed in order to exercise more control over your environment and to manipulate those things. And like I said, when you start to talk about that, you kind of come into conflict with other like Christians or spiritualists or people in other religions. But honestly, people who have studied Eastern religions don't seem to be as weirded out by these concepts. You know, these are things that are a part of their spiritual practices, meditation, light work, sound work. You know, they find themselves looking for a balance with nature that unlocks the purpose for which humans were put into this universe. You know, you have to think about it. Even if you are a Christian or a Muslim or a person who's in a Judeo-Christian religion, we aren't given access to the books that unlock how you use the Bible, not just tell you what it is. So it can be daunting to explain with a limited amount of information how this actually works but when you start to operate in the realm of dominion which was God's original plan for man which is what Jesus supposedly died to return to us which is dominion then you have to begin to learn how to manipulate the things that exist within this realm the Bible explains to you what this realm is made of it says that to everything there is a season you know, this realm exists with seasons, with time, with chance. All of these things are described as being elements in the Bible. And there is a fifth element. There is a fifth dimension. Most people only operate within the first three. But what we're going to begin to see, and this is just a side note, with the augmented reality is technology beginning to stretch people subconsciously into the fifth dimension. That's what this whole 5G thing is about. But like I said, that's another video. I promise I am doing the augmented reality video. And that one is an even wilder stretch than some of the stuff I'm talking about in this video. But what you have to understand is that everything that they're mapping in order to create new technology comes out of the mind and the brain and what the mind can already do. So while we're already operating in just about 10% of our brain capacity, some people can get up to as much as 19%. Like there are people who are bending reality and time that we may not be aware of, but it's a real thing and it can be done. But as they continue to work with virtual reality and technology, they're able to map these dark sides of the mind, like the dark sides of the moon, and find ways to create technology that literally mimics what your brain already does. So this fifth dimension are the parts of your brain that media and technology and 5G waves are shutting down, and they are now recreating that fifth dominion to give it to you artificially so that you never actually unlock the potential of what your mind and body can do when it exists in perfect balance with nature. That's the caveat of God, that if you want to have dominion over my creation, you have to live in harmony and balance with it. That's where you get all these rules of treat other people the way you want to be treated. You know, treat animals humanely. That's where these other rules come from because you cannot operate in perfect dominion when you have darkness, selfishness, and greed within you. We already know that. We already see the people who have money and power, the darkness that's within them is what becomes magnified. As I've told you before, women, this is particularly important for us in this day and in this season, because as I've also said, we're going to begin to see miracles of biblical proportion happen again. And if we're going to be the people in this day and time who can lay hands on people and heal the sick, and if there's anything that's needed in the world now, it's a healer. If we are going to be the bride 
and be the ones who are able to feed multitudes with a loaf of bread, we have to understand where that power comes from and where it lies. And I know everyone believes that, you know, if they pray to a higher power and are bathed in the blood of Jesus through baptism, you're just automatically going to be endowed with this power. But if that was the case, where is it? You know, I know some people that's been on their face for 30 years and haven't received that Holy Ghost power. Um, and that's not to say that it's not available to you, that God isn't real, that the Holy Ghost isn't real. I'm not saying any of those things. I believe so much in God, so much in the power that Jesus has endowed us with, that I'm willing to open myself up to the third eye, to the fifth dimension. Like when you start talking about opening your third eye, people get spooked out, think you're doing voodoo. I'm not. But I will say that the experiences that I have had have come as a result of living in that balance. And it's like I said, I've been in that balance before and not experienced the glory and the presence of God. And it's because it just wasn't time. Sometimes you practice things not to do them at that time, but to perfect them for another season. Because remember, we have seasons in this realm. So in the wintertime, you don't grow flowers in the wintertime. You can plant seeds. You can break up the ground. You can fertilize. There's a lot of things you can do in the wintertime to prepare for sowing season. There's a lot of things you can do in wintertime to prepare for harvest season. It depends on what you planted. Some things can stay in the ground during winter, but they're probably not going to come up. So I'm saying all that to say that these tips and practices that I'm encouraging you in is going to prepare us for a certain season, a certain time when it's going to spring forth. Like he says in Isaiah, behold, I do a new thing. Don't you perceive it? And it talks about how that new thing springs forth. If we are not at rest with our lamps full of oil, when that visitation comes, we're going to miss so many opportunities to help deliver people from destruction and continue to be a witness for the power, glory, and active force of God in this time. When I say the black woman is God, I mean that. And when you, it, and you may not think that there's a need for God, but when you look around this dark, dying world, I don't want to be a part of what's perishing. I want to be a part of what's living and what's thriving. So one of the things I'd like to issue is wireless Wednesdays. Just taking one day out of the week, one seventh of your week and shut off your devices. Leave your phones at home. Like totally and completely disconnect from media. It does wonders for your mind. It allows you to recover the parts of your brain that get darkened by social media. It brings your blood pressure down because let's be honest, most of the stuff we're surfing and watching, it's a stimulant. If it wasn't a stimulant, why would people get so addicted to it? Like it is hard to put the phone down. It is hard to turn the TV off and not turn it back on. It's so commonplace. It's compulsory. I have been in electronic fasts and picked my phone up and had it in my hand without even knowing it was there. It's compulsive, you know. So another step in my wireless journey was creating a media-free zone. Like if you'll notice here in room 303, there are no electronic devices. I mean other than the camera and all that stuff. But when I'm not recording, this is my space and every woman should have a space. I actually have done my closet in my room. Um, I might put some pictures of my closet in this video. I might not. It's my secret space. My kids aren't welcome there. My spouse, when I had one, wasn't in my closet. It was just my space. And it's filled with scriptures and plans that I have for the future. And I go into that prayer closet and I put forward my intentions and my hopes. I meditate in that closet. That's the place where I get 
a lot of my prophecies and premonitions because premonitions are a big part of prophecy as well. Prophecy is only one part like visions and dreams, but it's a whole nother part of just observing and actually interpreting signals, energy, sound waves, light from the world. You know, you can begin to sense certain things, you know, and then prophecy is also one part study. You look at patterns, you look at things that have occurred before in history, and you're able to make predictions about what will probably happen next. But you just have to educate yourself and you have to be so much more willing to interpret your environment through your emotions and your feelings. This is something that women are predisposed to being able to do, which is interpret and express nature. But see, we become so out of balance and the divine feminine is so important that even men have begun to take up the mantle of femininity, you know, through like the transgender agenda and all of these different things, just to be able to keep the divine feminine in the environment, in the atmosphere. So women, we have to begin to take that mantle back up again. We've become so entrenched with competitive career goals and all these things. And I'm not saying don't do that. I am not saying that women, you are needed on the front lines. You are needed as doctors and lawyers and you're needed in the marketplace. Even the Proverbs 31 woman was in the marketplace. She had her own business, you know, so you are needed. Like I said, in the Sigma female video, you have to have both the sword and the shield, you know, so having this sanctuary, Having this sacred space within your home, it helps you to recreate that within your body to treat your body like more of a sacred space. Once you have a sacred external space to care for and to relax in, you can begin to take that from the outside to the inside. And you'll also begin to see the places where you're out of balance because if you come into this sacred sanctuary and you're out of balance, you'll instantly feel that. And it will give you the opportunity to rest and to bring yourself back in balance with the serenity of your surroundings, of your external space. But if your external spaces are chaotic, if kids run in and out of your bedroom, in and out, you don't have any private space to yourself, you're never going to really find the peace in solitude. Solitude will start to feel like a punishment if you haven't cultivated that, if you haven't cultivated safety in solitude. Also, another thing that helped me a lot to begin to find balance, as I've said, is gardening. And you can have any type of garden. You can do an herb garden inside your house. You can do a container garden. You can do an actual, I use, I turn my flower bed into a garden box. So you can do garden boxes or just a traditional garden. But I can honestly say that gardening was something that brought out so many maternal, natural instincts in me. I worked hard. It was good exercise. Woo, it was good exercise. Baby, my back was hurting. I mean, that garden was a fool. You hear me? But you felt so accomplished at the end of the day. It was like a good tired. It was a it was a full tired. Like you felt tired, but you also felt filled up. You felt like you accomplished something. And then there were so many days when nothing was coming up, nothing was happening. I was worried about my garden like I was worried about a little baby. But the anticipation of it, it just gave you something to look forward to. But even more than just the joy of gardening, eating real food that comes out of the ground, real food, the stuff you plant does not taste like the produce in your grocery store. And I don't care if you go to Publix and Whole Foods and Earth Fair, the things I grew in my little garden, the cucumbers out of my garden taste better than anything I've ever gotten from anywhere. And I mean, I don't pay like a whole, whole, super whole lot of money for food. So 
maybe there is like real organic food somewhere that tasted better than what I grew. Maybe there is, but I was able to grow this cheaply and efficiently. It's worth it for the experience of it. Everything I got from the planting to the harvesting taught me something about the nature of God and my ability to bring forth life. We think the only way we bring forth life is through children, but gardening, you got to garden. You've got to experience that in your life. You know, God likens us to his garden. And just seeing what a gardener, what a husbandman, whatever they call it in the Bible, what they go through to bring you up and to bring you forth, it really brings you in balance with God. Like I learned a lot about God when I became a parent. I learned a lot about God, you know, growing up as a child. I learned a lot about God being a wife because he uses these archetypes in his word. But when it talks about agriculture and planting and pruning and all these different elements, when he talks about seed time and harvest and sowing and all these elements, if you have no experience with them, it's a very foreign concept to you. But once I was able to actually look at some of the things in the Bible with an experiential knowledge, because I had actually cultivated something, it just brings a new dimension. It brings you that fourth and fifth dimension of understanding. These are my tips that I would give to any woman who is really feeling burned out, tired, disconnected, disassociated. Because let's be honest, ladies, when we are out of balance in our environment, our love for things suffer, our love for our men, for our children, for our communities, for our parents, for our families, for our neighbors, for our friends, it wanes, it's affected by our imbalances. It's time for us to get unplugged from all of these devices, all of these time wasting, time consuming exploits, you know, spending hours on your hair, spending just time that you need. What are you preparing for based on how you're spending your time? You know, we need to get unbothered, you know, stop nitpicking with people and little things, things that just keep you occupied, but not fulfilled and get unleashed. Use this time that you actually have readily available to you to bring forward your potential. I want to see every woman pledge 5,000 seconds a day. Okay, you put it in your Fitbit or your little Apple watch or whatever to take 5,000 steps per day. That if you take your little 5,000 steps per day, and I can't call it little because that's a lot. If you take your 5,000 steps per day, it celebrates you at the end of the day. So I want you to take 5,000 seconds per day each day. That is 83 minutes and 19 seconds. It is one hour, 23 minutes and 19 seconds of each day to unplug, to just be about yourself. It is literally a little over 1 24th of your day. That's it. You can take 30 minutes in the morning and another hour at night. You can take 30 minutes on your lunch break to just meditate, go for a walk, do something for you. You can come home, take a long bath for 45 minutes, but devote 5,000 seconds, 5,000 steps, 5,000 seconds. And it sounds like a whole, 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 whole lot, but it's 1 24th of your day. A little more, you know, maybe 1 20th. But either way, a very small fraction of your day, if it's just spending your first 30 minutes in your last 30 minutes of each day, meditating quiet in a space that you've sanitized and sterilized for yourself, it's worth it to make that investment in yourself. When you can give your job eight hours, when you can give your kids the rest, it's worth it to just take a little less than an hour and a half to yourself each day. But you won't do it if you don't make space for it. 
And I don't just mean time for it. I mean space for it. When you have that space, like I have in my prayer closet in room 303, it will call you when you've been away from it. You know, it will become this sanctuary that you can come to and just let your head down. It's important to make that investment in yourself. If it's nothing but a corner of a room to sit some pillows there, do a nice little draped curtain and just have a reading corner. And don't make it like a sterile space. Make it a soft pink space. Have your own space. Have time. Make time for yourself. Be unplugged, unbothered, unleashed. And until the next episode, I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, your neighborhood wireless woman. For now, class is dismissed. I will see you, you in the next one. You took my soul.